Hey there, welcome to our Seinfeld show. I'm Chris, got Craig with me. Laura is off for tonight, but how are you, Craig? You know what? I can't complain. You know, my wife's having some laughs over here. We're having a good time on a sort of a cold, chilly Wednesday uh, evening here in Middle Tennessee. How are you? I'm okay. I hate the fact, and again, you know, with Seinfeld, you might listen to this 200 years from now. Who knows? Um, We are in... November 30th is when we're recording this in 2022. It is getting dark early because of Super Daylight Savings Time. So I ran a quick errand to the store about 5, and it was dusk. I'm like, it's 5 o'clock. Do you have Daylight Savings Time in Nashville? Yes, we do. Uh, It gets dark uh, a little bit before 5 o'clock here. At 4? Jeez. Yeah, like 4. I mean, I was in the office yesterday, and look outside at like 4 45 and it's it's dark and it's not because of the storms that we had coming in it was just the sun was going down and it's it's pitch black by five basically here it's it's it's, it's kind of hard to get used to at times because you get more light in the morning but unless you're waking up at like 6 a.m you're not really taking advantage of it so we only get like nine hours or a little like nine and a half hours of daylight most of the time what happens to the West Coast? Yeah. Yeah. Does it get dark I don't know. At two? I'm not really sure. You know, I mean, I would hope it wouldn't get dark at two o'clock in California, but who knows? Yeah, who we knows? need to get some Californians on here to talk about, you know, daylight savings there. Yeah. And, and just so you know, we are testing this. Um, we do a lot of recording on Wednesday nights. Um, think about making more of these live. We'll still put them out as podcasts. So, I see a couple of people are tuning in. If you yeah. have any questions, let us know. Uh, we're talking about Seinfeld tonight. Uh, the visa, right? Yes, the visa. Um, sort of a, I don't know. I, I guess this would be an okay episode. Not really a, a lot. The, the, the best part about this is Kramer. I mean, I, I think mm-hmm. we can all usually agree agree that the best parts of all these episodes are usually Kramer, especially when he gets into some of the physical comedy aspects of things. Um, But yeah, I mean, this is, you know, Babu, uh, Jerry's uh, restaurant tour friend is uh, driven into bankruptcy after, of course, he changes the menu at the cafe and uh, Babu has over Babu has overstated, you know, overstayed his visa and is arrested and of course, as Jerry returns from like a two week trip from a, from a comedy tour, um, Elaine has collected his mail. And in that lost in the mail was Babu's um, application to extend his visa, which he never gets because it was, you know, stuck on Elaine's dresser or whatever, as she was waiting for, you know, to give it to Jerry. And she didn't give it to Jerry right away after he returned. And Babu is arrested. And there's uh, some issues going on there. But George, sort of a classic, you know, neurotic George episode where he he meets a, a, a good looking young uh, lawyer and he's very funny. They're hitting it off. And of course, he's nervous because he's thinking this woman likes me because I'm hilarious. And then she's going to meet my friends. And of course, Jerry's a comedian and Jerry's going to make her laugh. And then she'll lose interest in George because that's how George acts. You know, that's how he is with himself. He just can't, you know. He can't get out of his own way half the time. And uh, the irony of this all is, is that Cheryl, the, you know, the, the young lawyer that he meets, is actually related to Ping, who is the uh, Chinese food uh, delivery, dry, delivery man who uh, is suing Elaine after Elaine got into an accident with him during a delivery. And it's, it's sort of an interesting, I'm glad that they kind of connect some of those things. You know, they connect Ping and Cheryl with, you know, with Elaine and, of course, Jerry a little bit because that's where the incident happened. But, um, you know, this episode is, is really about Kramer to me. Like, this is the, this is the big yeah. one here because in this, this time here, Kramer has gone to an, a fantasy baseball camp where, you know, a lot of people, you know, the Cleveland Guardians had these camps. I always remember them, you know, plugging it. Uh, and usually in like the winter, February or whatever, they'd have like these fantasy camps where you could pay to play with old pros. And I can imagine, you know, playing with old New York Yankees would be kind of fun. So Kramer goes to this fantasy camp and he comes home early as he was thrown out for punching Mickey Mantle of all people. So sort of a, a fun episode as Kramer 
tells this story of his fantasy camp experience, which only Kramer can do, right? Where it's very physical, talking about how he's, you know, he's brushing off, uh, you know, he's throwing up and in on hitters who are crowding the plate. And then, of course, a brouhaha opens up because Kramer hits a man and then they all get into a scrape. And, of course, he's being pulled off by someone and he turns around and punches him and it's Mickey Mantle, of all people, a, a New York legend. I have read some stories about Michael Jordan. He has a fantasy camp, and okay. I don't believe he's ever gotten a fight there. But there's been a couple times <laughs> when people have tried to upstage him, and he gets really ticked off, and he, he's dunked on people and stuff. You know, don't try to upstage Jordan. But I'm wondering if there's ever a fight at one of these um, fantasy camps before. Like, where did they get the idea from? Yeah, I, I kind of wonder. I mean, obviously, you could you could imagine that since it's Kramer, you would you would think that Kramer would just automatically something would happen because it's Kramer. But I guess maybe you know maybe there has this was taken from a story that uh, you know maybe someone heard about at a fantasy camp, whether it's the Yankees or someone else. But um, I'm kind of curious to see if they just thought, hey, you know, wouldn't it be funny if Kramer got into a fight and he punched Mickey Mantle unconscious, you know? <laughs> Yeah, it was crazy. I'm not sure if I told you this story, but I once went, uh, like, Pepsi had this promotion where if you won the game, won the promotion or the contest, you could pick eight of your friends to play at a ballpark near your home, uh, play against this fantasy team of Major League Stars. So yeah. the guy who won it was from Ohio. So they chose to have the game at um, the Clippers, Huntington Park, where the Clippers play. Well, it was really cool, Craig, because they had like Wade Boggs come back and they had yeah. Edgar Martinez and Johnny Bench came back and Frank Thomas played and Ricky Henderson and the pitcher was Pedro Martinez. And it was funny because you're like, dang, you know, uh, the guy looked like you and me. And, you know, they're like, man, Pedro Martinez is going to scare him. A lot of these like pros weren't playing that hard. I mean, Pedro's fastball was like 50 miles per hour. I mean, he really lost a lot yeah. from where he was at. So, yeah, it was interesting. Um, it was funny, though, because, like, Frank Thomas, uh, the guy who won, like, he ended up paying a ball 500 feet off of him. I mean, he crushed him. But late in the game, uh, they brought in Dennis Eckersley to face one of his friends. The friend hits a home run against Eckersley, kind of like oh, Kirk Gibson. Nice. And actually, his head shot back as he watched the ball leave the, the field. It was kind of crazy. So, yeah, I'm fascinated by these fantasy camps and see what yeah. happens. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, you big, know, you have the money, I guess. You, you know, you, I think, I don't, I think George just in passing said, you know, Kramer's whole life was a fantasy, which is a good, which oh, was yeah. a good part of this, of this uh, story. I can't remember if he said something like, you know, he puts down like two to four thousand dollars down. It was one of the, it was one of those two numbers, I think. Um, so I'm, you know, I guess if you have the cash to, to, to participate, why not? Right. Oh yeah. It'd be, it'd be great fun to, to try it out. What would hey, you, I, if you could fantasy camp, like any sports team, any, any era, whether they're dead or alive right now that you could do it right now, who would you, who would you want to like fantasy camp with? Realistically, it'd probably be some type of a basketball thing. Oh, I mean, I couldn't imagine nice. doing a fantasy for. Yeah, fantasy football, but yeah, I could imagine like you know playing a football game against uh, pros. I mean, maybe if we could play flag football, I'd be more into it. I, I just don't be killed at one of those things. I mean, I don't know. I mean, the NFL is my sport. I, I guess if we could play flag football, it would actually be the NFL first. I, I've mm -hmm. lost interest in baseball. I liked following baseball in the nineties. Mm -hmm. So if you bring back guys from the nineties, I might be interested. Yeah. But probably for football, or maybe just. Uh, playing pickup against you know some NBA guys. Okay. What yeah, about that'd, you? That'd be kind of fun. I think I would. Um, I I think for me, I would probably choose the the nineteen ninety seven Marlins. I'm a Marlins fan. That's their first uh, World Series championship. The two thousand three team was a lot of fun to watch, but uh, the ninety seven team had Gary Sheffield, who was at the time my favorite baseball player. So it'd probably be fun to to throw some pitches or you know, get some hitting, you know, lessons from Gary Sheffield possibly. So I think the 97 Marlins would be my fantasy camp attendance. Yeah. They had a show like that. What was it? Pros against Joe's was on. Spike yeah. TV. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that vaguely, but I do remember it. Yeah. And then they had another one. It was a little bit different. Uh, Shaq against, I believe it was where. Yeah, okay. 
did he play against I, I never watched it, but I heard about the show. I just did he play against like average Joes, like average people thought they could like take on Shaq in basketball or something? Um he picked a star to go up against each game. Um, now, if they have a bunch of players on the team, there's probably some average Joes, but the guys featured was like the players he would go against. So, like one day he picked uh, Big Ben Roethlisberger, and this one Ben was a younger guy, and then they would have they would say, "Okay, we're going to have a football game," and Shaq's the quarterback of one team, Ben's the quarterback for the other team. But they give hmm. Shaq more advantage. So, okay. like Ben would start his own ten yard line, Shaq would get the ball at the other team's twenty yard line. You know, you try to even up things a little bit more. Okay. Uh, so there were probably guys on both teams that were average shows, but the guys featured were more, you know, the pro guys. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Okay. Um, you know, another part of this of this show that I actually liked this episode was uh, we got sort of the. Uh, dramatic and dark and mysterious Jerry. So, of course, George is telling Jerry to not be funny, so he doesn't impress this this new yeah. love interest, Cheryl. And as Jerry's talking to her, especially about Babu's case, he's trying to you know be very dreary and just uh, very monotone and and not so excitable or funny. And uh, he ends up making Cheryl fall in love with him. Like she actually says that she likes that about Jerry, that he's <laughs> dark and mysterious and brooding. And uh, I just, the, the funniest line that he had was when she's like, well, after all these like very dreary messages and sounds that, you know, coming from him, she's like, well, what do you do? I'm a comedian, which is hilarious because obviously yeah. – she would yeah. never have guessed that given, you know, his, his speech. But then there was also a fun line, too. Um, and it's probably one of the few things that Elaine really got got a chance to really do in this episode, which basically says that his life revolves around Superman and cereal. So that was another funny line uh, that came from Elaine. And, you know, don't ask your love interest to do stuff because, um, you know, George made her mad when George revealed at the end, hey, you know, Jerry's really the comic. Yeah. And they were trying to get um Cheryl to, to help out um the favor for Babu. And you know, she said, forget this after what happened. And now Babu's gets supported. He goes back to yeah. Pakistan. Yeah. And we get uh, one final very, very bad man about Jerry. And of course, you know, Jerry's always kind of portrayed as this likable, sort of likable, I guess. I mean, obviously, he's a little shallow with how he treats women and thinks of relationships. But, you know, like his mom's I, it, and I'm, I'm not sure if it's before this episode, but, you know, his mom has said, like, how can you not like Jerry? So, you know, that's kind of how Jerry's portrayed as being sort of this, you know, likable person where he doesn't really like rock the boat too much. But of course, Babu. He always seems to get involved, and it always seems to be in the worst ways possible. Well, I got two issues. Uh, first of all, come on, Babu. You you can't – don't count on Jerry to help you out with everything. Uh, shame, you know, shame on Babu for that. And two, why would you trust the aims of the big four? I mean, they seem to be likable people. If they're real-life characters, yeah, you want to hang out with them. They probably make yeah. you laugh and everything. But I don't want George, Jerry, or Kramer, <laughs> or Elaine handling my affairs. I mean, they're going to forget. That's who yeah. they are. Yeah, you know, I always thought, like, it was weird because you're in New York City, and, and New York City is a melting pot of diversity. So I thought Jerry saying, hey, you should, you know, have a Pakistani restaurant, not just a restaurant that has all these, you know, culinary features from across the country like every that you could get anywhere you want so i always thought that that was actually not a bad idea and i'm not really familiar with pakistani food but i just always thought like that's not a bad that's that's probably better business decisions than what babu was thinking with the cafe that just kind of brought every dish from around the country together you know i don't maybe i'm wrong but you know i would think i would think that there's Pakistani restaurants in New York City. Yeah. And I wouldn't say 
Jerry shouldn't give business advice, but well, no, I'm not saying he should accept yeah. it. I'm just saying, like, it didn't seem like it was that bad of business advice. Like, you know, maybe if you're not in a, you know, you want to be in a certain area of town, I guess, but you know, you want to provide people from, you know, even in the cities that you know that we're around, you know, in the city that we're in, we have international markets, and you know, I can only imagine how much more magnified that is in New York, where you know, you have Chinese and Japanese restaurants and Thai food and just Italian restaurants, everything in between. So why why wouldn't you want like an option there for Pakistani? People want to try exotic foods or different things that they've never had before. And everyone's allowed to give their opinion. I'm not saying Jerry should right. give an opinion, but that has got to say, hey, you're a comedian. OK, yeah, right. I get yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. D- don't trust Jerry. I mean, you and I have shared some personal stuff back and forth over the years, but you and I both have common interests. We work at common places, so we can help each other out with that. I mean, that'd be like me trying to give you advice on how to repair something, something I know nothing about, or you shouldn't trust me about, you know? Makes it tough. Oh, yeah, definitely. All right. Any other thoughts about this, Seinfeld? Uh, uh, no, speaking, I mean, just just a solid episode. Probably nothing more. The, the most memorable part definitely has to be Kramer and his physical comedy. But yeah, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say that this is like you know latter half of the Seinfeld rankings or in the upper half. Probably just in the middle for me. Yeah, I would think that too. I mean, I got a big laugh out of the. Anytime you say, hey, I punch Mickey Mail, you know, that, that makes a oh, laugh. Right. Yeah. I got enough against Mickey Mail, but, you know, yeah. just the way Kramer said it made me laugh. Yeah. Made me, I, yeah. Made me kind of remember when, when it, it, I, again, some of these episodes just kind of splice in between each other, but remembered when uh, Kramer got into that argument with uh, Gendison and they were like yeah. going at him on the golf course and he was like, the physicality of Kramer's comedy, just like we were going at it like an umpire and a manager banging into each other. And yeah. you know, Jerry was getting, you know, Jerry was getting so uncomfortable from it. It just made me remember that scene too, when he was talking about punching Mickey Mantle and describing this brouhaha between he and the uh, old timer Yankees. My favorite baseball moment of the show. And it's been a lot. Um, the Joe DiMaggio one where Kramer's imitating the way he hits oh, his no. leg. Yeah. Well, no, no one distracts Joe DiMaggio, so Kramer's yelping and hitting his leg, and DiMaggio yeah. wouldn't be distracted. Yep. That, that makes a laugh. That's probably just me. So, all right, well, let's promo a couple of the other things that are happening uh, tonight. Uh, like I said, we're going to try and do some more of these shows live. Uh, you can see them as they're being taped. Uh, we release one podcast a day. So you'll get, even if you miss them here or, you, or you're not connected with us on social media, um, you can actually listen to them as a release throughout the rest of the week. Uh, but I talked to uh, Peter Holland. We had a football show, uh, actually two segments. Uh, one we talked about. Uh, college football, Ohio State got beat up bad against yeah. Michigan. Uh, but there's some talks saying they, they could still make the playoffs, even if the top four teams all win. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, and if Ohio State can make it back in, if it's worth it, because Ohio State got waxed by Michigan, I'm not sure if, you know, they deserve it or not. Um, you know, Christina Smith, our Michigan friend, I'm sure is, was really excited after that game. Uh, let's see what else we talk about. Oh, the NFL. Uh, we had a show talking about how three of the four AFC North teams won. Uh, bo- uh, the Ravens lost. So I uh, talked about what it meant for the Browns and Steelers and Bengals to win and for the Ravens to lose. Um, obviously, today we talked about Seinfeld. Uh, Craig and I are going to do a brief never segment about some TV stuff. Yeah. Uh, some stuff I want to share with Craig about what I watched over the weekend. And then. Um, Paul and Joe come in. Uh, we're going to break down the Steelers' uh, win of the Colts. We're going to do another segment. Uh, Paul and Joe love to get after each other about is Kenny Pickett a good quarterback or not. So we'll try to break down Pickett's performance against the Colts and try to figure out if he's a good quarterback or not in another segment. And then finally, our extended show, lots of crazy stories, led off by a near brawl at a Arby's in Hudson, Ohio, that ended mm. up on TikTok. So wow, okay. Um, that this is how you win social media. If 
Craig, you're doing this for yourself or if you're doing this for um, your paper, just get in a fight in a fast food fight place, put it on TikTok, and you're going viral. You know? Definitely, yeah. Hmm. So it's interesting. Um, I uh, emailed my friend Mike Shear, and he, they're looking into the story. So we'll see if <laughs> the TikTok fight um, <laughs> in Hudson makes it to the pages of the Acrobica Journal or not. Nice. It'll be interesting. I don't know. I don't see Mike Shear as the guy that would get in fights on TikTok. Right now. He doesn't seem that type. Yet. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Very much so. So, and, and also, I'm going to talk about this a little bit more in the next segment. But um, yeah, support local journalism, man. Uh, there's a lot of uh, comms jobs that have been affected uh, everywhere from Twitter to Meta. Um, we're seeing this also in the journalism field. Um, Gannett's got some uh, reported layoffs that are coming at the end of the week. Hey, you can help fight that. Support journalism. Buy the paper and print. Uh, subscribe online. Uh, and it's not just a charity case. You get to find out what the heck's going on in the, the area around you. So uh, check that stuff out. All right. Well, Craig, we better bolt so we can make the next show. Uh, for Craig, this is Chris. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Jennifer Mooney. Welcome to what is our new Hope Interrupted podcast based on the work from our book, Hope Interrupted, that I co-authored with my good friend, Byron McCauley. Hey, Jennifer. You know, I'm looking forward to this podcast as much as I was look, looking forward to writing this book with you. We hope to interview some uh, high impact folks as well as have a little fun. We're going to cover stories of hope to learn more about our podcast and our book, please visit www.hopeinterrupted.com.